Hey Rockhounds, today I want to talk about chalcedony and agate nodules and how they form and how I as a geologist interpret the different stages of development of different agates and uh, nodules. Most Rockhounds are very familiar with what an agate is, but just in case anybody doesn't know, an agate is a concentrically banded chalcedony nodule. This is a great example. And uh, a cool feature on this particular agate is um, what I'm interpreting here as the entry port for the silicate fluids to come into the cavity. And sometimes you'll see agates that have multiple ports of entry for fluids. But anyway, that's how I interpret that. I'm sure people have wondered why some nodules have quartz crystals in them and others just have banded agate. So these are some of the things that I wanted to discuss today. When the temperature of the silicate fluid is over 300 degrees Fahrenheit, that is when generally macro crystalline quartz will grow. So as an example, this geode has a hollow that is filled with tiny little quartz crystals, macro quartz. The chalcedony and the agate is actually microcrystalline quartz. It does not have visible crystals like this. So you get chalcedony precipitating out of silicate, hot silicate fluids between the temperature, well, anything below 300 Fahrenheit and you'll start to get chalcedony. Anything above 300 Fahrenheit and the conditions are better for the growth of macro quartz. And of course, as you can see in this specimen, it's had different pulses of both. So some of the ways that I, as a geologist, interpret a geode like this. Now, the difference between a nodule and a geode is there's a cavity inside of the geode. It doesn't have to be filled with quartz. It can still be chalcedony. But if you have a hollow, we call it a geode. If it's solid all the way through, like this example here, then you would just call that an agate or a nodule depending on, on the makeup, because these can have more than just quartz growing inside of them. So this fantastic Baker Ranch geode uh, shows some very interesting um, stages of development. So first what you have is you have banded agate growing around the edges. And then you have a period of waterline development. People call this waterline agate. Straight banded chalcedony like this is actually onyx, but most people don't use that. They just say waterline agate, which is perfectly acceptable. So then you have this period of development where you just had waterline growing and then conditions changed again and you got the quartz lining in the middle. And so the way I interpret this as a geologist is first you had a period where in order to get the chalcedony, the agate, to actually defy gravity and line the entire nodule, you have to have pressurized fluid. So the first stage is a pressurized fluid that's below 300 degrees C and that, or Fahrenheit, and that is why you have chalcedony lining the entire um, nodule. Then the fluid lost pressure and started to just precipitate this water line down here. And you can tell that the geode when it was developing was actually at an angle like this because water is not going to defy gravity. So this surface has to be parallel to the surface of the land. Even though, you know, it looks like if you hold it straight up and down, then your calcini would have been precipitating like this, but that is not the case. It would have been tilted in the host rock and that's how you got that water line. So there's this one extremely small but very significant detail in this water line here. And that's this bit right here. So the water line was precipitating like this and then there was some sort of tectonic event that caused 
a shift in the orientation of the rock that this was growing in. And it tilted, so it went from flat to the new flat. And that's when you got this precipitating here. And then when hotter fluids came in later, that became the new surface for precipitation right there. So look for small details, small changes in orientation of the water line that might indicate there was some sort of tectonic event, perhaps an earthquake. This agate is very similar to the last one. You have the initial stage of precipitation of agate that lines the entire cavity. And then you have a depressurization that causes the precipitation of horizontal bands of chalcedony agate, also known as onyx. Then you have a period of hot, hotter fluids crystallizing the massive quartz in the middle. So again, above 300 C for, or I'm sorry, 300 Fahrenheit for macro quartz to grow, and under 300 Fahrenheit for the onyx and the and the um, other microcrystalline quartz to grow. One very common thing that happens in the development of an agate nodule is a chemistry change in the precipitating fluids. This is interpreted as taking quite a long time, this process of cavity filling of chalcedony. And so over time, the chemistry of that fluid can change. It may still dominantly have silica in it, but you can have a change in the um, trace elements. And so maybe you had some manganese dissolved in the silicate fluid during this period, and then there was more iron during this period. And then the temperature of the water changed and you've got this crystalline um, area in the middle with massive or um, what we call macro quartz in the middle. And so that's another thing you can see if you see non-dyed agates that have varying colors, you're looking at a change in chemistry over time. This is a cool agate because it shows that when the nodule first started to form, when the vug or um, cavity in the magma or in the lava flow started to precipitate silica out of fluid, it was hot, but it wasn't under pressure. And so it just quietly filled up till about here. And then more fluids came in and they were under pressure. And so the, it was able to be deposited around in concentric uh, gravity defiant um, layers because it was under enough pressure. And so that happened for a while and then it went back to a quiet period and you got this little band in the middle. And then again, under pressure for the remainder of the fill there. There's another excellent example of a water line combined with concentric agate and a tiny bit of macro quartz in the middle. And again, this would not have formed with these layers being initially tilted. So it would have, the cavity in the rock would have been about like that. Then you get the concentrically forming agate. It looks like this might be the entry port for the fluids right here. I really can't tell, but that would, you have to have a way for the fluid to get into the bug. So this could be uh, one of those spots there. You have pressurized under 300 Fahrenheit silicate fluids coming into the opening, depositing agate in this concentric shape. Then the fluids changed, the pressure was released, and you start getting water line forming. And the chemistry changed a little bit over, t over time too. You can see the different colors. And then at the very end, the last stage of crystallization had hotter fluids, hotter temperature. And so over 300 Fahrenheit and you got this macro crystalline quartz in the middle here. So this is an interesting case. Um, the way I interpret this is that there was some 
calcidian precipitation inside of a space. Stalactites grew inside of the space and then later fluids came in to deposit the agate that went between and around and totally encompassed the already developed stalactites. And then I think this little bug here has macro quartz in it so that would indicate a stage of, of the temperature increasing for that to form there. But anyways, that's how I interpret the development of this. And you can see where the chemistry changed in the fluid. For this last stage here, there's more iron probably, and that's why it's this orange color, versus the rest of the chalcedony is kind of this light pale blue. And that is how I, as a geologist, interpret the different stages of development of agates and nodules. And hopefully you learned something too. Of course, there are different ways to interpret agates, but um, this is how I do it. And um, please, you know, leave me a comment or questions below and don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks.